celebrate uh, during this important uh, month of Hispanic Heritage Month. But, you know, these celebrations have to go beyond that. They have to go and be focused on action. And when you do an, an analysis of this administration, uh, that's what we have been about. Uh, you have witnessed uh, some clear uh, gains in movements and position of power and influence. So many first time ever in this administration. This is probably the most diverse administration in history. People, people see themselves in our administrations, our policies, our focus, uh, what we have done. You know, we often ask and hope for uh, folks of color to get into roles, and when they get there, not acquiesce and ignore the people who got them there. Uh, I have been clear on that. I've been unapologetic about having a diverse administration and focus on a working people agenda, and we have done that um, over and over again. You look at where we were January 1st, 2022, and look at where we are now as a city. It's not based on my analysis. It's based on uh, all of the wins we have. And the city's back on so many levels. We're going to continue to do so. But we can't ignore the real crises we're facing with the asylum seekers and migrants without the uh, help um, from the uh, federal government, which I think it is really uh, uh, you know, it's just humiliating to what has happened to New Yorkers and what has happened to migrants and asylum seekers. Uh, we should not be put in this position. Taxpayers should not be put placed in this position to see long uh, uh, waited for programs are going to be impacted. And we should not see migrant asylum seekers placed in this condition, uh, having to be in shelters and camps and tents and not being able to work. And so we need to all add our voice that New York City deserves better. And I'm going to continue to do so. I'm hoping in your publications uh, that you can continue to do an analysis of what is happening to our city because of this crisis. Uh, well, but first of all, uh, do an analysis of who was against me. Let's do that first. It's the okay. same people that's against me when I talk about public safety. It's the same people that's against me when I talk about housing. Same people against me when I talk about mental health crises. You know, the loudest are not the majority. Everyday New Yorkers who see me, they know uh, how I am around these issues. They know how I am about uh, immigrant issues, immigration issues. And no, I was on point. I had a very honest conversation with New Yorkers that this can destroy our city if it's not under control and it's real. We're talking about in this city, we have a $106 billion budget. $76 billion of that is already accounted for. It's already paying for pensions and everything else. So we have five, uh, we have, I'm sorry, $30 billion left. Out of that $30 billion, it pays for all the services we're doing, foster care children, of, of senior care, of all the things that we do that we are using for programs to help people. Out of that 30 billion, we're gonna spend 5 billion this year for migrant and asylum seekers. So that leaves us another 25 billion. Then we're gonna to have to spend another 7 billion in the next two budgetary cycles. So we're talking about out of the 30 billion that we have to take care of our city, 12 billion is coming out of that. The long-term impact of that is devastating to struggling New Yorkers who already were dealing with crises uh, after the pandemic. And those same people who are criticizing me, but ask them, what have you done to get the migrant and asylum seeker issue addressed in our city? And they don't have Next an answer. One, uh, Primera Linea, Mr. Luis Martinez. Mr. Mayor, How are you doing, Louis? Ken, uh, how are you? Uh, uh, we're wondering about, I mean, the asylum seeker is one of the main concerns that we have. But we've seen, me as a Venezuelan, what this, uh, some Venezuelans are doing in the city. I mean, with more bikes and uh, disorganizing, disturbing. What is the city going to do with these people that do not really represent the Venezuelan community? And, and, and I think that's so important, you know, because your concerns of uh, people here when I raise these concerns in very in many areas, 
the quality of life issues. It seems like Eric is raising them alone, alone which is not true. Uh, when I speak to uh, the Spanish speaking community, when I speak to those who have gone through the immigration process, they raise these concerns. Of, and they want to live in a clean, safe, orderly city. They've made that clear. I hear it all the time. And the major media markets uh, want to act like uh, that is not the, period, the, the position of the uh, Spanish-speaking community. You know, but the migrant asylum seeker is not only a Spanish-speaking issue. We have a large population of people who are coming from the West Coast of Africa. We have Chinese that are coming through the southern border. We have Russian speakers that are coming through the southern borders. Uh, we have people from Poland that's coming through the southern border, Ukraine. Uh, so people want to make it appear as though we're just talking about Spanish speakers, which is just not the reality. People are coming from all over the globe through a weak southern border and it's impacting us. And when you come here, you have to maintain the quality of life that we expected. We are zeroing in on the in Ill use, illegal use of, of, of motorbikes, scooters, that has really caused a real problem in many communities. I hear it all the time from Park Slope to Park Chester. I'm hearing people saying, we don't want these unsafe conditions of people really not fitting the behavior practices that is expected in a major of a crowded city like New York. And we continue to zero in on that. You saw we had an interac interaction in the 83rd precinct in Brooklyn when we clamped down on some of the asylum seekers, some, not all, but some that were using their scooters illegally. Uh, we're not going to tolerate disorder in the city. And I made that clear from the time that I ran for office. Listen, the sun is going to come up tomorrow. Uh, we will have another day. We've gone through 9-11. Uh, We've gone through COVID. Uh, the sun will come up. Uh, what my concern is, what does that new day look like for struggling New Yorkers that need governmental services to help them get a step up in life? That's my fear. And so while we are dealing with this crisis, we are not ignoring how to ensure our city does not just survive, but we have to thrive. And we're doing that. There's a whole body of my administration that's not dealing with this crisis at all. They're continuously rolling out good, smart economic policies. We announced yesterday a real housing agenda, the largest rezoning in the city's history, we believe, to build more housing so the city can remain affordable. We're still getting a substantial number of corporations that are opening their world headquarters here in New York City. Amazon just did an amazing opening here in New York in New York City. So we are still seeing the economic recovery. People are coming back to work. Uh, there was never 100% office utilization. There was always about 80%. And we are getting inching closer and closer to that 80% of people back on this, uh, 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 in our office spaces. Our subway system, we were really struggling to get people back on the subway. Last week, we had one of the highest number of people utilize a uh, subway utilization, capping out at 4 million riders. We're averaging around about 3.6, 3.8 million riders. So the city's recovering, tourism is up. We get a double A bond rating from a Fitch the bond raiders. So we're not sitting on our hands saying, hey, we had this major crisis, so we don't have economic recovery. No, just the opposite. We are still doing some great things, cleaning our streets, everything from rat complaints being down in the city to containerizing our garbage to rolling out an entire electric vehicle um, program. Day after day, we're showing how the city is not sitting back just hoping to survive, we're going to thrive in this city. This city is humming, it has come back, and it's going to continue to come back.